This is Urban Knife Guy, where we discuss knives for city dwellers. Today, we're going to have a look at the Benchmade Foray 698 and see if it makes a good urban EDC knife. So, it comes in the iconic Benchmade box. And inside, we have a drawstring bag or dust jacket for the knife. Let's open that up and get the knife out. And I'll share with you my first impressions of this knife. I thought that it was a beautifully designed knife, very handsome, and it's very well thought out in terms of the design for what they're trying to achieve. This is a gentleman's folder, and I think from an aesthetic point of view, and of course, uh, in terms of functionality, they really hit its mark. Well, before we get to specifications, let's have a look at some comparisons. We have the Victorinox Trail Master, the Kershaw also sweet and we also have the Spyderco Para 3 and we've got an Altoids style box so that will give you an idea of how large this knife is let's have a look at the specs of the Benchmade Foray the blade length is 3.24 inches long. The handle is 4.14 inches long, so that's the closed length as well. The overall length is 7.32 inches long. This is basically a fairly small knife or medium-sized knife. Uh, I have small to medium size hands but i think this is a good size although personally i do prefer to carry blades that are three inches or less now it's not for legal reasons because where i'm from i can carry bigger blades but just for ease of you know bringing around and using in let's say a public space i generally prefer three inches or less and that's kind of a unwritten or unspoken rule as well if law enforcement does happen to stop me and uh, i do show them the knife having a four or five inch blade may be harder to explain if it's just for utility purposes so i generally try to keep it three inches or below but i made an exception for this particular knife now the blade steel, this is premium super steel. It is CPM 20 CV. It's really good steel, so it's very hard. So the blade hardness is 59 to 61 HRC. It's very tough. It's wear resistant. Edge retention is great. And it's also, you know, corrosive resistant as well. So very, very good blade. It is a premium blade, so it really can do any of your normal urban edc task because after all i won't be bashing through a jungle with this i will not need to cut through adamantium or vibranium so this is really going to last a long time and the edge is going to hold as well because one thing about this uh, particular metal it will be harder to sharpen and you notice there's also a slight recurve on the blade right there at the belly that may be a bit tricky to sharpen as well uh, but if i do need to sharpen it, i'll try to use my sharpening system if not i might you know send it over to a professional to sharpen the blade style is a drop point style blade uh, satin finish and the thickness of the blade is 0 0.137 inches which is about 3.5 mm so it is actually a very thick and sturdy blade uh, for a knife of this size the lockup is great this uses an axis lock so an axis lock uh, is basically this horizontal bar which you can see can move back and forth and that omega style springs in the liners both liners this causes the axis lock to spring back and basically hold the tang of the knife in place for that lockup so Yep, very good lockup, no up and down or side to side movement. Now the scales are black contoured G10 scales, very nice, very, I guess, uh, handsome and, you know, fits the overall design of the knife. The stainless steel liners on the inside are skeletonized, which means that you probably can't see it that easily but it's drilled out sort of points uh, probably to keep the weight down but i do like uh, liners with g10 scales because it just makes it feel much more solid as well uh, there is a pocket clip it is a deep carry tip up clip and the great thing is if you are left-handed you can switch it to the other side in fact this is an ambidextrous knife uh, for both left hand or right hands for deployment there's a thumb stud that goes right through and 
you can open it up in either side and to unlock you just grab the access lock with your thumb and your index finger and you can pull it down to disengage and fold up the knife now you can also deploy uh, in this way you can pull down the access lock and give it a flick so it comes out and make sure it locks in place as well and to disengage pull it down and you can just let it drop so just one thing to take note of and i learned this the hard way now when i held the knife initially to deploy and to keep the blade i held it basically i guess what you'd call a master grip very natural grip in the hand the butt of the knife was very close to the bottom of my palm there now the thing is when i pull down the access lock to unlock the blade you can see i naturally placed the butt of the knife against my palm right that's for leverage and just to keep it secure the thing is when i released the knife and it dropped it actually pinched and cut me you can see that's uh, cut in fact i have three cuts this is the deepest and that was just with playing around with the knife so uh, now i make sure that i do not hold the knife uh, close to the bottom of the palm i keep it out here and you can see now the butt extends out from my hand so i can deploy it safely and if i were to release it it would drop and it's nowhere near my hand so that's something uh, to learn if you have this knife uh, do be careful and every knife is different their unique characteristics you get you need to get to know each of your knives uh, because they will pinch you but i think uh, the best way to get to know your knife is basically to let it bite you as it did me here uh, one thing i should mention now now the action on this knife is really good you can see it just flicks out and it can drop down close just like that but when i first got it uh, it was pretty stiff even when using the thumb stud uh, so what i had to do was to take a torx screwdriver a t8 bit and just unscrew that uh, pivot right there this uh, pivot screw just a bit uh, so that it would loosen up and i also oiled it and that really helped now it's important that you have to tweak and uh, not make it too loose as well because you do not want any movement uh, in the blade uh, you just want that sweet spot where it drops down nicely uh, yet everything is nice and uh, you know make sure that the blade is centered as well so the weight of this knife is 3.58 ounces it's not super light but i generally like heft in my knives so i don't think it's too heavy to bring around if it's in my pocket i mean I'm, i know it's going to be there but i don't think it's going to be a bother but when i take out the knife i know i have a sturdy knife uh, that i can use for all the tasks that i need to do now the price for this particular knife now this knife is actually discontinued and i think it is quite an underrated knife I mean, it's, it looks good, it performs well, great material. Uh, so I'm surprised that it got discontinued so early. But the MSRP was 230 US dollars. Uh, but I've seen it, you know, go down at cheaper prices, I think about 195 US dollars. You have to check it around because it's discontinued. A lot of places have it out of stock. Uh, but, you know, you can try to find it. And I, I do believe that's still quite readily available. Let's talk about how to bring this knife around every day. After all, if it is an urban EDC, you must be able to carry it easily on your person, on a bag uh, that you might carry. Now, this knife, as I said, is a medium-sized knife, so I would likely put it in my pocket. I do have a typical EDC organizer that I do carry, and this is uh, too small for this particular knife. However, I also do have the Arc Company's Rambler, edc holder this is basically a two uh, hole or two compartment storage holder and this knife actually fits into the back holder which is meant for knives anyway now there's still space to put something else such as uh, a flashlight this is the olight i5t eos and this actually fits in uh, it's a bit snug, but it does fit. Everything can get together just like that. Now you can see it doesn't flatten out uh, just because uh, the items are big, but there's still space. You could even put uh, this Zebra extendable pen and that can go right here. 
So you are able to carry three items uh, in this fairly compact package. I mean, if you put it in a pocket, it might bulge a bit, uh, but you could, you still could put it in your pocket or you could put it in a pouch or sling bag or satchel. Or you could do without, let's say, the flashlight and you could use another pen. So I have here a bokeh pen and uh, this tactical pen goes in just like that. And now you can see that's pretty much flat, easy to bring around and put in the pocket. Or you could look for an even slimmer flashlight to go in. The golden question is, is the Benchmade Foray a good urban EDC knife? Personally, I do think so. In terms of fashion, this fits casual wear, smart casual or formal wear, although I won't bring this to the beach. Uh, the size is still right. It is uh, quite sleek, won't take up much space. You can put it into your pocket uh, with the deep carry pocket clip or you can put it in an EDC organizer or in a bag. Overall, I think it fits the whole gentleman's carry. Um, if you want you know, a knife that looks elegant, that will fit your dressing and doesn't look like some uh, murder death weapon. Uh, I think this is pretty good. I always think this, you know, looks like something James Bond might carry. Now, if I'm in public, of course, I'm not going to do a one hand flick of the knife. That would still scare people. I would discreetly use a two hand open, always keeping the blade down, do whatever task I need to do and then close it up again with uh, two hands. But other than that, I think uh, this is a great urban EDC knife. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions or you have info to add to this video, please leave a comment below as well. well I'd really like to thank you for watching this video on the Benchmade Foray 698. So keep it folded, keep it safe.